Okay, today's episode is really exciting because this is my mom. And if you don't know, she had 19 children. I am number three out of the 19. And she is one of my heroes because a thousand different reasons. But I thought it would be neat to kind of have mom talk about motherhood, especially even in this stage that I'm at right now. So you have a lot of little children, a heavy workload, but it's wonderful and exciting at the same time. Stay tuned to hear mom answer some of, I think, the biggest questions that I would have for her right now. So I feel bad. I'm kind of throwing these at my mom. She doesn't have any um, notice for this. I sh probably should have typed them out and sent them to her. But That's okay. <laughs> um, she's a great communicator. So. I might ask you oh. that, sir. <laughs> no, please don't. Okay. First, I feel like something that was very important in my childhood, when I look back, you always seemed so positive. And even when there were the overwhelming days, so to speak, you know, when you just feel like you're – you're not going to be able to get ahead. I always remember noticing that you had a smile on your face and you know usually you were even humming a hymn and it's, it was so pleasant you know because as a child you look at your parents and you're like wow this is a crazy moment you almost <laughs> expect them to react but to see you so calm and peaceful at that moment I think was just so reassuring as a child and I really admire that. So tell me, tell me about that. How did you cultivate that in your own heart well I definitely had those moments where I feel I, I totally felt overwhelmed yes. and you know how can I homeschool how can I cook healthy how can I clean the house how can I do it all and at those moments that would be my private time with the Lord with Gil I would lean on him a lot maybe cry on his shoulders and he would <laughs> give me a Bible verse and encourage me yes. but in front of the kids I always tried to make it a choice to be positive because I strongly believe that your perspective really rubs off on others. Absolutely. So if you Absolutely. set a negative tone in the home, you're always complaining or moaning or, you know, you're just depressed, your kids, your husband picks up on that. There was a saying Dad used to say about, you know, if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And I really feel <laughs> really like, true. I really yeah. feel like the mom is instrumental in the attitudes that are going to take place in the house. If I'm depressed and upset and complaining, there's going to be more, you know, squabbling Straight. between the yeah. kids and more, yeah. you know, complaining between them. So I feel like it is a choice and I'm not talking about, you know, I know there, that we have to be real yes. and open and honest. Yes. I'm not talking about being dishonest, but I really feel like it is, y'all use the word intentional a lot yeah. as a family. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional about things. Yeah. And I feel like that's one thing I wanted to be intentional about was to try to be joyful in front of my kids. Yes, yeah. they saw me cry and they saw me with yeah. emotions too. But for the most part, I wanted mm -hmm. them to see peacefulness and joyfulness. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is a choice. Is it a hard choice? Yes, but you have to remind yourself that this is a ministry. It's a yes, ministry it to my family, it is. and yeah. it's contagious. You want to be around happy people because it is contagious, <laughs> and it it makes you yeah. feel good when you're around pleasant yeah. people. Yeah. And on a, another note with the same question is, I feel like, you know, you're around a lot of moms at times where you feel like they're just so negative about oh my goodness they're terrible t right. twos or threes right. or you know my child is just all, all of these negative things and I feel like you never really had that attitude because it's not easy but I feel like your perspective was different even about your children I never heard you say negative things you know especially to others about you know, you know that I, I feel like I got convicted early on I don't think I even had children yet I was pregnant yeah and I noticed that every time you'd ask someone who's pregnant how they are Horrible. you were almost like you were almost <laughs> like scared it. yeah scared to hear the answer because it was so negative yeah. and I used to I would tell Gil please don't let me be that way not that I didn't want to be transparent yeah. I did but I also did not want to be negative Nancy and I yeah. began to see that if you focus on the negative 
you will feel negative. Yeah. But if you focus on the positive, a lot of times it's not that you're not being real, but a lot of times it will yeah. affect your perspective. It will affect your emotions. So if you're concentrating on the good and the positive, and you have that chipper, joyful attitude, then you'll feel that way. <laughs> you will. It does affect how you feel. But I also noticed that I was around a lot of just typical moms who it was. It was the terrible twos and oh, pray Everything for me. Oh, negative. my kids did this and oh, I don't know what I'm yeah. gonna do and oh, I wanna pull out my hair and I would even go places when I had lots of little yeah. ones and they'd be like, oh, you must be so stressed out and yeah. how do you do it? And I heard a mom answer once, yes, my hands are full, but my heart is full too. And I got convicted about my responses and I said, Lord, Help me to have the kind of response where my kids don't feel like they're a burden, yeah. but that they really do feel like they're a blessing. We say they're a blessing, but sometimes our responses yeah. and our actions don't show them that, and it definitely doesn't show other people that. So I think it was just a conscious choice that I tried to say, hey, I want my kids to know, I want the world to know that they're a blessing. Do they get into trouble? Are they a handful? Absolutely. Absolutely. But they're a blessing still. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think that was very important, the fact that you never spoke negatively about us children. And I think that was just, I don't know, that was just so special, you know, because I would hear other moms talking specifically about their child. I thought, wow, that must really embarrass them, you know. Yeah. You wonder about how that makes them feel when their I, parents I feel like as a negative. mom, the, one of the biggest ministries we can have with our kids is being their cheerleader. Yeah. There's enough negative things hitting them yes. in the world. There's enough insecurities mm -hmm. and doubts. We need to be there to help them, guide them, and, yes. and be the supportive person that channels them in the right direction. And that was beautiful. And I want, I want to do the same with my children because, you know, you're around so many moms that focus on the negative. And if they're focusing on that, it's going to come out to everyone they're around. And that can really harm your child. And I feel like that benefited us, all of us, in such a big way because you were our biggest support system. Another thing I want to talk about is I feel like throughout my whole childhood, you, in every child really, you pray specific things about each child. Um, character, um, ways that they were growing in or interests that they had, you were like right there behind them like, how can I be of help in this? How can I show that I'm interested? You know, for me, um, you praised each child in academic, what they excelled in academically. Right. And then you also pick like what their likes were. Like I, I loved music. And you were always there when I was practicing, praising me, telling me how wonderful it sounded, even though it probably did not. <laughs> but, um, and then I remember even as a little girl, you're like, wow, you're the greatest speller. Like, you can spell so good. Like, you were always like, that's amazing. Well, then, you know, it switches, but like, I, that gave me so much confidence. So tell me a little bit about how you praise different strong points in your children. I feel like when you have a lot of children, there are so many differences. There's yes. differences in their mental abilities, in their talents, in their skills, in their drives, in their personalities. Yes. And sometimes, you know, I hear people talk about the golden child, and that would be what people call the perfect child that's no trouble. But the danger in that is, is that you've got lots of little children, and they don't have the same personalities. No. And they each have weaknesses and yes. have strengths and if you're not careful you praise the ones that might you know do the things that right. look like you know they're good things in your mind and you forget that oh this one might not you know be yeah. talented playing the piano or this yeah. one might not be the best cook or the yeah. best cleaner but look at what they do do they're a giver they are the yeah. ones that are praying for other people that have a soft heart so I began to see that, you know, kids already, they tend to compare yeah. themselves. They're insecure. They're insecure. Yeah. They are. There's a lot going on that they face. And so I began to think, you know, I need to look for things that I can praise in the yeah. kids. And they're different. This one might not be a good worker. 
And that needs to be talked about. They need to learn to be a good worker. But at the same time, if I'm only praising this one over here that is a good worker, this one is just feeling more and more insecure. Yeah. I've got to find something in this one to praise. Maybe it is their tender heart, yeah. you know. But each child has something we can praise. And as you begin to praise them, they excel. They grow yeah. and grow and grow in that area, yeah. plus some, plus some. So I feel like it's really important, really important that idea of being that cheerleader yeah. finding something to praise yeah. in your children and now looking like at my all of my siblings i feel like each child you praised in specific ways and i yeah. feel like that was a huge reason behind who they are today yeah. um, and a lot of times as parents we only yeah. see the here and now so it's like true. for instance piano playing you mentioned if you're a mom of a child that has taken lessons, violin, piano, and it starts off with the one finger <laughs> or the squeaky, yes. it's very easy as a parent to say, stop. You know, stop, or to dread that. But if you're looking ahead in the future, you've got to realize, if I don't praise these baby steps yes. now, they're going to get discouraged and give it up. Yeah, if my end goal is for them to succeed, I've got to still be their biggest yeah. cheerleader. So I would tell y'all, you know, play, play, play. I don't care if it's one finger. I don't care if it's, yeah. you know, on a piano out of tune. I would say it's music to my ears. I love it. And I tried to make y'all yeah. feel like I loved it. And I learned to love it yeah. because perspective. It yeah, is. I, and I even remember, like, I love to write um, you know, little stories and stuff or little letters. And I would take them to mom and she would just be like, <gasps> That is so amazing. Like every little detail. I mean, <laughs> no, no, it had nothing to do with that. It was the fact that she made me feel important. And she made me feel like I was special, you know, in these different areas. And I feel like that really just made me want to do it more and even, you know, just give it my best. And so I think that's so important as a mom. And for as long as I can remember, we had morning Bible study. And a lot of times dad was at work. So this was kind of your almost like a character lesson. Mom would read a biography. And then another thing she would always do was we would go over our scripture memory. And so I just want you to tell me some tips for instilling scripture in even the little children. You know, you have two, three, all of these ages. How did you do that? And maybe give us some tips for that. Oh, goodness. Well, we had lots of help learning from other people, I will say that. But um, Dad would tend to do the Bible study at night, right. reading through the Bible. So morning, we I took the things that tend to take a longer amount of time, yeah. and I would do them while he was at work, which might be reading a Christian biography or memorizing the Scripture. Yeah. Those are the things that take a little bit longer. So with Scripture memory, um, we just found that repetition and... The more senses you're doing, sight, hearing, yes. touch. Mom so, is so good. She is my hero, and she's the person that really pushes so me to do more of this. Repetition is everything yes. with kids. If you're yes. teaching anything, you'll um, see a lot of yes. curriculums will use music. They'll put things to music. Yes. But if you use hand motions, if Which you use everything, music. everything, she put hand motions Some too, verses, we would, if you remember, some verses we were memorizing, yes. we would sing them to a tune Absolutely. of a hymn and it would help us memorize yeah. that particular yeah. verse or we would just repeat repeat some verses now yeah. jab is a little bit um hyperactive he's hard to <laughs> he's get his so attention and sometimes i'll clap you know in yeah. sync with the verses as i'm saying them to help him yeah. anything that jogs your memory yeah. that as you're trying to focus on that verse if i do this i remember yeah. or and seeing the multitude he went up into a mountain and when he was sat he opened his mouth and taught them saying you know yeah. put motions with it then as yeah. you're trying to memorize it that comes back to mind you can remember it and keep and, going and i think i'm i'm kind of blown away now that I'm a mom that a little two-year-old can memorize scripture and retain it yes and and you might ask like what is the purpose of that how is that going to help them because they can't meditate on that you know but I think even throughout my teenage years I, I can't tell you how many times that scripture came back to my mind right and it was just like this is the foundation for my life this is what everything every decision I make I want it to be based on scripture and, and just the comfort, and it, it's so powerful, I think. I think our mind was boggled when um, Gil and I first were married our, and our kids were young. Yeah. We started doing Bible study, and we had a two-year-old and a one-year-old. 
Tiny. And we were trying to, as a couple, memorize yeah. scripture together. Yeah, yeah. And just in our regular family Bible study at night, we would quote what we were memorizing wow. and repeat, repeat, repeat. And one day Gil was at work and I had laid the kids down for their nap time. And I heard Zach, the two-year-old, saying the verses. We had not even been teaching wow. him because we didn't know a two-year-old could learn. So yeah. we weren't even trying to teach him. He picked it up from hearing us. So it is. You, two-year-olds yeah. sing songs. If they can memorize anything, yes. they can memorize and scripture. And I think it's something that's fun. Like, Mom always made it something that we look forward to. The kids loved it, and I loved it. And so I want it to be the same way with my children. Another thing is, with a big family, there's always, you know, I feel like you were always trying to make time for us to connect. And I thought of, I just started down a couple different ideas that you really um, made it such a big deal in our home. And I think uh, playtime with dad, um, that was something that we just really connected and had fun, laughed about. Um, and then another thing was family Bible study in the evenings like you talked yeah. about. And then one of my favorites was called Mom's Minutes. Yeah. Tell me about Mom's Minutes. Mom's Minutes, I think, again, we got the idea from somebody else. Yeah. But it was just a way to have conversation around the table. to maybe, dinner time. To maybe hear things that you don't normally yeah. hear. They're conversation starters. So it would be little strips of paper folded up in a jar. And I think you made some right. at some we point. We made some yeah, up in a jar. And it might be something just, just off the wall, yeah. like what's a embarrassing moment. Yes. But then there also might be some, what's you know, more spiritual fear? minded yeah, things too. in there. Yeah. But it was a way to get everybody connect. to open up and to connect and to talk and to share yeah. and to learn to converse. Yeah. And it because just, I, I think you want to create that spirit of unity in right. your home. And so, right. But sometimes yeah. as parents, we don't know these things yeah. about our own kids, so we're learning. Even and though we laughing. live together and we spend time together, yeah. sometimes it's eye-opening to hear some of their answers, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's connecting. That's it's, one of my favorite memories. Yeah. I do love that. So if you have the chance, jot out some questions and, you know, put them in a jar. Let somebody draw out a question every night at dinner and just go around the table. Um, because that was, that was really special. And then I just added on a bonus question. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you could give advice... To moms with little children, um, what would that look like? I know that's kind of a hard question because there's so many different areas you could cover. Oh, there's, you know, so much that I could say here. But I want to say, um, in regard to these specific yeah. questions, I was not perfect by any means. I had no, my, you know, things that I wish I could go back and redo, mm -hmm. like anyone would say. But I feel like... Um, in order to keep your perspective positive, in order to keep joy in the home, in order to keep an attitude of gratitude instead of an attitude of complaining, I feel like you've got to have a Bible study. Absolutely. And I feel like, you know, that is key. You've got mm -hmm. to be in the Word of God. I know it's a busy time, but I tried to be diligent about, you know, taking notes. And I would even, you know, things I didn't understand, I would ask Gil when he got home, you know, can you explain this? But trying to have that Bible study yeah. but also having that relationship between your husband I there's so many so couples good. I see that they're living together mm -hmm. they're married together they're raising kids together they're going to church together but they don't have the deep friendship connection, connection of mm -hmm. hey this is my best friend but you're gonna need a shoulder to lean on mm -hmm. and having that connection developing that relationship I really think the thing that benefits kids the most is having a healthy Absolutely. relationship Absolutely. between mom and dad. Yeah. And and there's people yeah. out there, I'm sure, that maybe they're, they're not married mm. and they've been through a broken home. And I grew up in a broken okay. home. My parents were divorced. So my heart goes out to, to these parents because they are there. And I would say, rely on your church, rely on the Lord, and, and just pray that God will give you, you know, grandparents that will invest in your children's lives, yeah. that other, but somebody for you personally yeah. to lean on that you can go to yeah. for just that encouragement to get yeah. back the That's right important. focus, the right focus. That's really important. I think it just gives you so much security yeah. as a child to see your parents, you know, as a team and having that beautiful marriage together it's not always perfect but yeah. you're just really striving to please the lord and love each other 
So I hope that that answers some of your questions. And I know my mom is a wealth of knowledge. So I'm grateful to have her here. She's just here for a day. Short, one short, day. Short. But I am so happy that she take the time to do this. So God bless you all. And have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.